The other day we made a video on making a pen plotter insert for this CNC and this was the result of that 3D printed mount. Pretty straightforward and the file is shared on Thingiverse. The goal with this was to have an easy drop-in system that would just lock into our holder here which is designed for a DeWalt 611. I believe it's 69 millimeters for this opening here. We've got access to our tightening nut here and it's really pretty simple. It is what it is and it's controlled or it's tensioned with a rubber band. After we built this and did a bunch of photos, actually a bunch of drawings which came out really kind of neat, the next evolution was to actually 3D print another one for a vinyl cutter. The pen mount holder that we designed, I drew it up in Design Spark Mechanical, which is a really, really cool program. They've got a free version and then a few different other versions that you can use. And the free version does a whole lot. I have had the one step up, I think it's called the Creator version, which is 12 or $13 a month, but you don't need it for this part. And here is our very simple drop-in pen holder and it was a pretty easy 3D print and I will share this file for anybody that wants to kind of work with it and do any adjustments that they want to do. This is the small part that holds the vinyl cutter to that ruler segment and I drew this up in Design Spark Mechanical. This is the free version which has a lot of tools and is very capable on its own. So I will save this file or share this file to Thingiverse along with the larger drop-in mount. The evolution of the mount to hold our pen so that we could do pen plotter work is what we see here. So we first started out with a circle to make sure this would fit easily and neatly into our DeWalt 611 mount right there. Then we moved on to this mount here which the plan was to drop in and then to CNC cut kind of a board to the front here and then mount our rollers. But in the process of designing that it seemed like it made sense just to make one that had the whole back to it. So this was our next design here and that dropped in, but then we realized we needed to have extra openings and extra cuts and things needed to move a little bit. Like these rubber band set screws, they needed to be relocated. So with 3D printing and 3D design, it's easy just to make some changes. So on this one, actually I think this was the next evolution here. This one we made our notch at this point, moved some of these holes around, and you can see that this cylinder is a lot taller than this one. So we wanted this to sit more deeply into the holder. And then we needed to make a notch in the back so that we had clearance for the bottom bolts when this dropped in. So that was the next evolution. And then we changed a few more things, moved a few screw holes, and got to that result right there. What we could do, instead of printing another one, we could just make another mount here. And this is just a ruler that was a scrap metal ruler that I cut down. And you can see the numbers on the back for, for the ruler, which fits in here very well. We could just make another slide-in mount for that, for our vinyl cutter. But since it's easy and cheap just to print another one of these, and because I had a box of these bearings from another project, I thought we would make just a dedicated vinyl cutter. There are of course commercial vinyl cutters available that just mount into the collet chuck for, for your router. They're not cheap. They start around 50 or 60 bucks, and the really decent ones can be comfortably over $100.
And to put one of these together with a much more modest budget is certainly possible. This is 10 bucks, and it comes with three of these little cutters. So there's one in there, and then there's these two. And let me tell you, they're sharp. <laughs> they're very, very sharp. So we've got our retraction mechanism here, and there's a little magnet inside. So you push this down and pull it out and swap it out for another one. So what we're gonna do is, since I've got some more of this ruler laying around, and since we printed another one of these, and I've got these bearings sitting around, we're gonna make a whole nother mount here to hold the vinyl cutter. I went through my hardware junk bin and we've got the parts here to make our vinyl cutter. Here's the leftover scrap of this old ruler that we will cut down to the same size as this one and we'll use this as a template as far as our holes for the rubber band for our tensioning mechanism. Now we'll bolt this all together. Actually we don't need these. <laughs> because we've got those bolted through there. These are our parts that we're using for this. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We've got our ruler section here. This just drops in between these V-groove bearings. We'll move these in and tighten them up. I made in the design an oval in the back so that we've got some space to, to work with here to make these nice and snug. And as far as holding our cutter here, what we'll do is we'll 3D design a part to follow these contours so that we can hold that in place below the bottom of the ruler. And just like that, we've got two quick drop-in units, one for vinyl cutting and one for a pen plotter. These are designed to fit in the holder for a DeWalt 611, which we've got temporarily rubber banded to the top. And as far as dropping these in, we just drop that in there. We've got our tighten down bolt on this side. Since we're working on this 59 StarCraft, I thought it would be fun just to cut out the StarCraft name in vinyl. I approximated the font from the original StarCraft emblem, but the original font is available. It's pretty expensive, so I didn't purchase the font set. So let's get some tape on here and pull this off. When it comes to removing vinyl cutout letters or designs or emblems, if it's a solid piece, you can just pull it out and apply it to whatever you want to. 
if it's a bunch of letters or a design that has multiple parts that you want to keep tight or keep in the same relation to the other other parts of the sticker you want to use some sort of backing material so we've got some transfer tape here we're going to cut this put this on it and pull it off our transfer tape has been applied and this is just a low tack tape that has some really useful grid lines keep everything in the same kind of placement that we want. So we're going to pull this off and then just probably put it on the door just to kind of get a visual for this. This is just testing at this point. Just showing the way this looks as we pull this off, ready to apply. And when I do pull this off, I pull this off on a very slow angle keep everything clean so looking pretty good for testing here I'm just putting this on my workshop door and then because this is a low tack tape we'll slowly pull this off and then it'll leave the letters behind nice clean cuts and that's actually not a real fresh cutter that's on there those are pretty sharp cuts. Very, very nice. There is the transferred vinyl cutout. Very, very clean. Just as a comparison, this StarCraft cutout on this side was a bitmap trace. So I use the actual font that I found at some version, some year of a StarCraft. And bitmap traces can be a little bit rough. And you can see some of the waviness in some of the letters. It's not bad, but it's not as clean as if you had the original font. So that was just a test. But comparing some of those waves on that cutout to a straight font, you can certainly see the difference in sharpness. But they're both cool results. Fun stuff. Thanks very much for taking a look.